always the apical portion. So it is important that you know where is the apical portion because if you don't know, it's quite difficult for you to identify, okay? Or to name the epithelium. How about this one? So again, this is the whole thing is stratified epithelium. So pag stratified, look at the shapes of the cell. They have different shapes of the cells and different orientation of the cell. Again, the important rule or point in strative always look at the apical portion. So since this is flattened, it is called stratified squamous. Okay. Another uh, important point to consider in stratified squamous is that this type of epithelium is more protective in function. Of course, because they are stratified. They're strata, meaning many layers. So if there is an offending agent here, it's quite difficult for that agent to go. My God, please mute. Okay, so if there's an offending agent here, it's quite difficult for that agent to go in. So that's why it is very protective type of epithelium. Okay, another point to consider in stratified epithelium is that the basal layer contains the stem cells necessary for the regeneration of this renewable tissue. Okay, so from this type of epithelium, where is the basal portion. Can I call Mr. Pixon? Are you there? Yes, doc. Okay, please label. Where is the basal portion of this type of epithelium? Uh, around there, doc. Okay, very good. So the basal portion is here. So this is the basement membrane. Okay, and the basal cells, the, base, the basal surface is here. Therefore, the basal cells are here. So as I have said, it's important ang basal layer because for regeneration. Okay, so the, the mitosis or the division happens in the basal surface. Okay, so this is the mga baby as they grow, as they grow up to matanda na yan. Okay, ang mga cells in stratified squamous. So be careful not to destroy your basal cell layer or else it will not grow. Okay, so the dead cells are in the most, uh, the outermost layer. So they are the dead keratinized cells at the surface. Okay. So in our dialect, in our own way, they are called the buling, no? the buring. No? They are the, the dead keratinized cells. So there's a continuous regeneration. Okay? As you go in your physiology later, you will know how it happens. Okay? Um, the stratified squamous, as I have said, is made up of two or more layers. Uh, if it is squamous in the skin, they are made up of the cells are called keratinocytes, okay? So as I mentioned, the function is more on protection and resistance to dehydration and swelling. So where can you find stratified squamous? In the outer layer of the skin, the oral cavity, the linings of your throat, the linings of the vagina, as well as the lining of your anal canal, okay? So again, this is an example of a stratified squamous epithelium, the whole thing. This is a stratified squamous epithelium. Okay. So look at the shape of the cell on the apical surface. So since this is flat, they are plate-like or squamous-like or squam-like. It's called stratified squamous. Okay. Another one. Okay. The basal surface, the apical surface. Look at the cells, no? So it's quite difficult. I say iba iba ang shape, iba iba ang orientation. The clue always look at the apical surface. Okay, there are two types of stratified squamous. Okay, stratified squamous keratinizing. 
unstratified squamous non-keratinizing. Okay. The stratified squamous keratinizing is also known as orthokeratinizing or cutaneous type of squamous epithelium. It's called as such because there's the greatest amount of cytokeratins, no? And ito, yung mga cytokeratins yan. So they are the dead cells, no? These are the dead cells, okay? So this can be found in your epidermis of the skin and the masticatory mucosa of your oral cavity, okay? So again, this is the stratified squamous, and you can see here the keratin materials, keratinized layers, okay? So it is called stratified squamous keratinizing, okay? Another picture in the apical portion, basal portion, you can see the flat cells here, stratified squamous. Then you have the keratin cells or the keratinized cells or the keratin materials. Okay. How about the other type? The other type is stratified squamous non-keratinizing. Okay, this is also known as the mucus type or the hypokeratinizing. Here, you have lower amount of keratins. Okay, so again, this is stratified squamous. Stratified squamous. Then look at the apical surface. Flattened, flattened, flattened. But no keratin materials. Okay, or no keratinized cells in the apical surface. So it is called stratified squamous non-keratinizing. So these are found in your oral cavity, in the esophagus, and in the lining of your vagina. Okay? The next type of stratified epithelium is stratified cuboidal. So the function is more also of protection, pero less compared to your stratified squamous. Generally, in stratified cuboidal, there must be two layers of cells. Okay, so this is an example of a stratified cuboidal. Okay, so you can see strata, layers of cells. The shapes of the cells are cuboidal. Okay, cuboidal. So this is seen the gland in the salivary glands. Okay, so another example of stratified cuboidal. Here you can see a gland and another gland. Okay, so, uh, sorry, two layers of cells, okay, and the shapes are cuboidal. That's why it is called stratified cuboidal. Another one is uh, uh, the cells or the lining found in the developing ovarian follicle. It is also a stratified cuboidal, okay. So look at the very good arrangement of the cells, well, two, two layers, and the shapes are cuboidal. So it is a stratified cuboidal epithelium. Okay. How about stratified columnar? Okay. So stratified columnar are found in your vas deferens, in the male urethra, and the parts of your pharynx. Okay. So this is stratified columnar. Okay, look at the shape of the cells. Okay, columnar. Okay, then you can find uh, two or more nuclei. That's why it is stratified columnar. Okay, another one. Okay, you have the nuclei, nucleus here, nucleus here. So this is stratified columnar. Kasi kung simple columnar lang yan, isa lang ang nucleus mo at the basal. No? But if you look at it, there are layers, there are several uh, nuclei seen in that epithelium. So this is a stratified columnar epithelium. Okay? Another one. Okay? The shapes are columnar. The said there are many nuclei. And they are arranged well. So this is stratified columnar epithelium, okay? But when it comes to stratified epithelium, uh, do not be confused with some of these other types. The first one is a pseudo-stratified epithelium, 
Okay. In the pseudostratified, the cells of this type appear stratified, but in reality, they are not. Okay? So, sa tingin mo, para siyang stratified, pero hindi. No? Because each cell is in contact with the basement membrane. So, this is an one cell, one cell, one cell, one cell, one cell, one cell, one cell. One cell. If you look at that, para siyang stratified. But if you look at the basement membrane, each cell is in contact with that basement membrane. So, hindi sila stratified. And another one is look at the nuclei. They are at the varying levels. Okay? So, this is an example of a pseudo-stratified columnar epithelium. Okay? So, look at the variations of the nuclei, different sizes, different shape, and also parang it looks like stratified, no? Pero kung titingnan mo, naka-attach sa basement membrane, naka-attach sa basement membrane, naka-attach sa basement membrane, naka-attach. So when I when you look at this, para siyang stratified, but it is not. So it is called a pseudo stratified columnar epithelium. Okay? So another picture, no? So it appears as stratified, no? But if you look at that, may connection sila jan, may connection sa basement membrane. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Then uh, this is also called as a pseudo stratified columnar epithelium. Okay. So another exception is what we call a transitional epithelium. So by the time by the name alone, there is a transition or there is a shift of one type of shape to another type of shape. Okay, so this type of epithelium has the ability to be in transition or change as these structures stretch. Okay, so remember uh, these are found in your bladder, urinary bladder, urethra, and ureters because these organs are prone to stretch. You no. Know? Sometimes they are empty, pero pag may water na or any substances na nandoon, they are being stretched. That's why the lining epithelium are changed no? from one type to another. It's called a transitional epithelium. Okay? So in transitional epithelium, this is a special form of epithelium because when they are relaxed, they, are, they appear cuboidal. When they are stretched, they appear squamous. So, depende kung may laman o wala. Okay, so that's why ganito. No? So, para siyang stratified. No? Stratified, stratified. But if you look at it, iba ang shape ng cells dito, iba ang shape ng cells dito. So, yan ang clue ninyo. Titingnan nyo muna ang taas, then compare the other cells that belong to that epithelium. So this is a transitional epithelium. Another picture. Okay? So the shapes of the cells here are different compared to here. Okay? And so this is a transitional epithelium. Okay. So we'll practice now. So I will be calling some of you so if you know uh, if you understand. Okay. Can I call Mr. De La Cruz? Oh. Okay. Good afternoon. Can you name the epithelium and why? Uh, I think that is strati uh, Stratified squamous. Okay, very good. It is keratinizing or yes. non keratinizing? Uh, keratinizing. Uy, hain man Ay. yan keratin. Ah, wait, like, non keratinized. Okay, non keratinizing. Sorry. So you're right, stratified because why? Uh, stratified, uh, there are many uh, uh, different layers. Okay, why, layers squamous? Now. why squamous? Uh, squamous. Uh, uh, in the basal, uh, basal? there is an, uh, basal? There is an ap apical base, a basement or apical. Oh, bang tinawag mo stratified squamous. Why squamous? 
So marami siyang nucleus doc. Oh, a different no, layer. Mga, oh, no. So ano ang okay. sabi natin sa stratified squamous? So bakit mo tinawag? Two or more na, layer. Oh, to, yan doc. The stratified because two or more layers. Okay. 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 Squamous. Layer. Why squamous? Why squamous? Flattened cell. Flattened. Flattened. Flattened ang cell on the apical on the surface. surface. Yes, okay, yeah. So look at that cell compared to here. Okay, apical portion mo man, basal portion. Okay. okay. Next. Mr. Herrero? Yes, Mr. Herrero. No. Okay. Turn on. Turn on. How about this one? Identify the epithelium shown by the arrows. Squamous epithelium po, Doc. Squamous. Is it flattened? Ay, sorry, Doc. Coboidal squamous. Ay, coboidal epithelium po. What type of cuboidal? What type of cuboidal? Mr. Herrero? Uh, simple cuboidal. Okay, very good. Simple kasi usaman la o. Oh. Wala man siya magduha nga layer. Usaman la ito. Diba? Usaman la. Usaman la o. Oh. So simple. Ang shape are cuboid. So simple. Cuboidal. Okay. Next. Miss Kapongkol. Miss Kapongkol, are you around? Hello po, Doc. Okay. Identify the type of epithelium and why. Um, stratified. Okay, Squamous. check. Stratified. Next. Squamous. Squamous. Check. Why? Um, it's flat. The okay, flattened on the apical surface. Then, ano pa? Um, ano pa? Keratinized. Okay, very good. Stratified because multi-layer. Squamous kasi at the apical surface, flattened. Then, you have keratin materials at the top. So this is stratified squamous keratinizing epithelium. Next. Mr. Tumenyo. Good afternoon, Doc. Okay. Identify the type of epithelium and why. Um, simple columnar po. Okay, very good. Why simple? Kasi isa lang po yung nucleus. Okay, isa lang ang nucleus. Isang layer lang. Walang nag-overlapping. Columnar, why columnar? Kasi mahaba. <laughs> mahaba, okay. And column ang shape. So you are checked, no? So this is simple columnar epithelium. Very good. Next, let's go now to the glandular epithelia. Okay? So the first uh, topics that we discuss are surface epithelia. Let's go now to the glandular epithelia to confuse you more. <laughs> okay, so focus your mind now to the glands, no? Glandular. So when we say glands, they are single or group of cells na designed for secretion. So in the glands, my two parts, no? The secretory portion and the excretory portion. Secretory, pag nakaproduce na sila ng, ng substance, kailangan mailabas nila yan through your excretory portion or uh, part. Okay? So, we classify glands as exocrine, endocrine, and paracrine glands. Okay? So, exocrine, they secrete their products via ducts. So, or the excretory portion into the apical surface. So they are lined by highly specialized epithelial cells and made up of glandular epithelia. Okay? 
How about endocrine? If exocrine may ducts sila, ang endocrine walang ducts. Okay? So they they uh, they uh, deliver their secretions through the vascular system. Okay? So the, the secretions can affect cells located far away from the endocrine glands. As I have said, they don't have a duct system. And they secrete into the blood or the lymph. How about paracrine glands? They are similar to endocrine glands, but the secretions reach the target cells by diffusion. So para means near. Okay, so these are good only for the nearby cells, okay, or for the neighboring cells. Okay, so there are subclassification of exocrine glands. Uh, by, by, looking, by looking at the number of cells, what is the pattern of the duct system? What is the pattern of the secretory portion? What is the type of secretion? What is the mechanism of secretion? Okay, so let's go to this one by one. So I will teach you how, no? Para mas madali, no? For the number of cells, it can be a unicellular gland or a multicellular gland. Okay. Pag unicellular, syempre uni isa lang, single cells interspersed among other epithelial cells of different function. The only unicellular gland of the human body is called the goblet cells. And the goblet cells produce mucus or mga laway-laway, no? Substances. You will know that when you go to the system later, no? So the only unicellular gland of the human body are your goblet cells. Okay. Samples of goblet cells are the empty spaces, okay? So this is a section from the intestinal segment. So as you can see, they are empty. So these are your unicellular gland. These are your goblet cells. They're empty because during the processing, the mucin are dissolved. So that's why it looks um, empty, okay? So here, this is your goblet cell, goblet cell, goblet cell. Here may pinkish colored because we use a special stain para ma-highlight or makita natin ang laman ng secretion niya. Again, this is a unicellular gland. How about multicellular glands? Okay, they occur as many adjacent secretory cells within the epithelium. So they are found in the surface mucous cells of your stomach and the complex glands with ducts. So take note, another uh, way of, classifica of classification of your exocrine glands are the pattern of the duct system. So as I have said, the, uh, the glands have two parts, no? the secretory portion and the excretory portion or your ducts. Okay. The secretory unit, uh, this is also called as the asinus or the asini. Okay. So let's look at first the duct system. Yung duct system no? The duct system can be simple or compound. Simple, pag isa lang, pag dumami na yan, it's called compound. Okay? Whereas the secretory portion, this one, can be tubular, asinar, alveolar, or tubuloasinar. Meaning, what is the shape of the secretory portion? Okay, so it can be a simple tubular, it can be a simple asinar, or it can be a simple alveolar, or a simple tubuloasinar, or a compound tubular, compound asinar, and etc. Okay, so any combination, it depends kung ano ang makikita mo dyan. Okay, so let's look at it. Okay, um, for the simple glands, example are your sweat glands, the gastric glands, and the intestinal crep glands, and the uterine glands. Okay? Simple kasi and branch. Wala, isa lang siya, no? Tubular kasi shape niya is tubular or asinai. So we call it simple tubular or simple asinar. Okay? 
So look at that, no? So these are your sample or your sweat gland. Okay. How about compound? Compound glands, example, are your salivary glands and pancreas. If you look at their ducts, it's already branch. Whereas the shape of the secretory unit can be tubular, asinar, or tubulo asinar. Okay. So look at that, no? So iba iba ma branch na ang kanyang um, ducts. So this one. As these are your asinai. Okay. So um, again, for classification, it can be simple or compound, and for the pattern of secretory portion, it depends upon the shape. Okay. So when you say tubular, it looks like this. Okay. A sinar looks like this. My central lumen. Okay. Ito naman parang tube. Alveolar, look at that, no? The nuclei are at the center. Okay, center. Ito naman at the periphery, a sinar. Okay, yan ang pagkakaiba nila. Then, malaki ang lumen ng alveolar. Ito maliit ang lumen. Okay. So, this can be a simple tubular. Simple kasi isa lang. Okay. Then, tubular because of the shape. It can be a simple coiled tubular or a simple branch tubular or a simple branch asinar. And this one are the compounds. So, madali lang ang compounds kasi madami na talaga yan. Okay? It may be a compound asinar or compound tubular. Okay. So, can you find the ducts and asinai here? Hmm? So the whole thing is a gland. Okay, the whole thing is a gland. Your task is to find the ducts and the asinai. Anyone? Um, can I call? Miss Viernes. Are you around? Hello. Hello. Yes. Uh -uh. Can you draw or can you identify, can you point to us the ducts and the sinai in this picture? Um, <laughs> I'm not sure, Doc. But... Okay, lad, let's try. Just try. <laughs> the duct. Um. Okay, the clue, the ducts are passage, no passageway, or they are the excretory way. So, ibig sabihin, may dadaanan, may, may, mayroon niyang passage, no? May dadaanan. So, that's your ducts. The sinai are the secretory portion. So, medyo close sila with each other. Sige daw, itry mo lang. Um... Um, I'll try the duck. Oh, sige. You can draw either um, um, other colors one? so that it can highlight. Lakihan mo. Ang liit. Yan. Malapit ka na. Pero yan lang ba? Oh, look at that. No? May, may daanan. Imagine, may substance na dadaan. So, that's a duct. So, oh. <laughs> you're there. You're there. Yan. Sige pa. Nga, saan pa? Sige pa. Um, Yan, o, oh, di ba? Oh. Kung dadaan ang substance mo dyan, saan siya pupunta? O, oh, kung dito, o. Oh. Look at that. Parang parehas ang cells nila. O, 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 o. Saan pupunta si Doc? O, kung may laman dito, nag-secret ng isang asinay mo, asinus mo, dito na siya dadalhin, di ba? Yan. This is, an, yeah, ito. Okay, oh, yeah. yan. Di ba? O, paprehas ang mga itsura nila. Yan. Saan pa? Ito pa, di ba? Ito pa. Okay. The rest are a sinai. Okay. So this one, no? Yan. Can you see now? Yes. 
Okay. So a sinus, a sinus, a sinus, or the asinine, they are the one who produce the secretion. So sila kung pag ilalabas na ang secretion, dito na yan dadaan sa ducts mo. Yan, sa ducts. No? So if you look at the ducts, parehas ang mga lining, parehas ang mga itsura nila. Okay? Parehas ang mga itsura. Okay. Very good. Okay, how about the types of secretion? So we can classify also exocrine glands based on the types of secretion. Okay. So the type of secretion can be a mucus, it can be a serous, or it can be a mixed type of gland. Okay. So mucus, so mucus, mucins, lawai. No? So mostly they are tubular with pyramidal to columnar secretory cells. So the nucleus located at the base. No? So the cytoplasm is empty kasi ang laman niya ay secretion niya. That's why puti, white, mucus material. Okay? Compared to your serous, another, I'm sorry, another picture of your uh, mucus glands. Okay? Look at the nucleus at the base. Look at the cytoplasm, empty because of the secretion. Okay. Compared to your serous glands, they produce watery. No? So they are a cyanar, nucleus basal, and with cytoplasmic by basophilia. Okay? So this is a very good example. So look at that nucleus. Okay. This one. Basal. Then you have uh, parang may laman, no? Parang may laman. So there are eosinophilic materials, which are your seals for the watery secretions. Okay. So another picture of a serous gland. Okay. The pinkish materials are the secretions. The blue are the nuclei. Okay. So malalaman mo because it is serous. Okay. Mixed glands. Mixed glands contain both mucus and serous secretory unit. So the best example is this one. Okay? Mucus gland, yung mga puti-puti, no? parang empty. Then the serous glands, this one, the pinkish material. Okay? So it is a mixed gland. Okay? So to compare serous from mucus, no? look at the lumen, the lumen, Look at the nuclei, nuclei. Then look at the cytoplasm. Okay? Pag mucus, medyo clear or bubbly. No? Clear or bubbly. Pero here, look at the cytoplasm. No? Para siyang mayroong mga laman. No? Eosinophilic materials in the cytoplasm. So this is serous. This is mucus gland. Okay? How about the mechanism of secretion? So we classify also exocrine glands based on the mechanism of secretion. So it can be a merocrine gland, it can be an apocrine gland, or a holocrine gland. Okay? So merocrine, look at the, the I'm sorry. Look at the um, picture here as well as the illustration here. Okay? So, pag merocrine, they expel fluids through the vesicles. Okay? So, kaunti lang. Okay, bibigyan kita, pero yan lang. So, yan si merocrine. Okay? So, bibigyan kita, pero yan lang. So, that's the type of merocrine glands or merocrine secretion. So, this is seen in the sweat glands. Okay? How about pang apocrine? Okay? Pag apocrine naman, yan. They pinch up apical port. Kasama, may part ng cytoplasm na kasama or part ng cell na kasama. Okay? Yan. So compared sa kanina, wala. di ba? Sa merocrine, secretion lang. Okay? Pero pag apocrine, look at that. No? May part of the cell na mayroong kasama. Okay? Secretions explode from the cells. 
How about hollow green? Ang hollow green is ito yung bigay todo, no? Bigay to, ibibigay niya lahat. O gagawin ko ang lahat para sa iyo, no? Ibibigay niya lahat. Ho, kaya nga hollow. Hollow means whole. Hollow green. Lahat 'yan ibibigay niya. No? So, bahala na kayo kung ano ang classification niyo. If you are an apocrine, if you are a merocrine, or if you are a merocrine gland. Di ba? Okay. So, uh, let's summarize to this. Okay, again, epithelium. So, we classify that based on the number of cell layers. Uh, simple. We have stratified. The shape of the cell can be squamous, can be cuboidal, can be columnar. Okay. Then, the last part of that epithelium are the presence or absence of surface modifications. Okay. So, the surface modifications can be, uh, can be located at the surface or it can be in the basal or it can be in the lateral. Okay. So, important dito, alam ninyo kung saan ang surface, asaan ang basal, and then asaan yung lateral portion of the epithelium. Okay? So, let's start first a uh, practice before we go to the surface modifications. Let's call uh, Mr. Ormineta. Are you there? Yes, Doc. Okay. Can you identify the type of epithelium? Mm. Stratified cuboidal, Doc. Stratified cuboidal. Okay. So based on that picture, yes. it's quite difficult because more layers, kaya siya stratified. Circular. Yes, Doc. Pero kung titingnan mo, iba ang mga cells dito. Either... Iba din ang mga cells dito. Okay? Uh, so do stratified I think doc no, because no, no. ano sa nga layer ano to be? Um Yes, Mr. Orminita. Mr. Ormenita. Wait, Doc. Um, good to hear. Anyone? Any volunteer? Is that transition? Yes, no. Yes. Oh, bakit transitional? Transi Mr. transitional why a sudden change of your answer, Mr. Ormenita? Uh, Okay, it changes in shape and resemble either stratified duct, stratified squamous, or stratified cuboidal in shape duct. Can you can you see the change here? Uh, layers lang niya duct. Uh, anong nangyari sa layers? Layers of this cell. But some part may dania squamous, then the other parts are cuboidal. That's how I see it. How you see it. Okay. How about others? Any volunteer? Anyone? Pwede mag-try. Sige. Try. Uh, stratified squamous epithelial. Stratified squamous epithelial. That's according to the, uh, Mr. Obiehas. Any, any more? Anyone who wants to try?
Excuse me, Doc. Yes. Possible po ba na stratified cuboidal po yung epithelium pero may nag medyo nag medyo may irregular shapes lang yung ibang cells due no. to the fact na yung pag-prepare ng tissue? No. Ah, okay. So, they will not change kung ano yan, kung anong talaga ang lining nila, yun ang itsura nila. So that's why you have to look at it uh, correctly. Could it be stratified columnar, Doc? So, Mr. Potential, you're stratified columnar. Okay, any one last uh, volunteer? One last volunteer. Pseudo stratified, Doc. Miss Berisho, you are pseudo stratified. Is pseudo stratified what? Columnar epithelium. Columnar ba? Can you see ba the nuclei at the at the basal portion? So that's why I have to show it to you because it looks like stratified. Okay, it looks like stratified because there are many layers, but this is again the exception because this is a transitional epithelium. Okay, so look at these cells. No, puro parehas naman ang hitsura nila. No, kaya lang may malalaki at the top or in the apical portion compared to the the bottom on that the basal portion, okay. So it change kasi depende kung stretch bayan or relax. So kung titingnan mo parehas, so hindi naman siya columnar kasi ang ang nucleus niya yan ang mga cura nila, no? Hindi naman siya cuboidal kasi iba din ang shape dito, di ba? So this is a transitional epithelium. Next. Can I call Mr. Tan? Yes, Doc. Okay. Identify the type of gland based on secretion. The type of gland. Based on secretion. Based. Uh, is it a serous type of secretion? Parang hindi ka sure. Why, <laughs> hindi why serous? Ka sure. <laughs> oh. Why serous? Uh, kasi may violet. <laughs> okay, meron siyang eh, may, may laman, no? Okay, very yes, good. But hindi lang color, ha? Kasi iba-iba lang ang color. Yes, Do not... I'll be confused with the color. Next. So that's cirrus, okay? Can I call... Miss Margallo? Yes, no. Okay. Identify the type of epithelium. Uh, mucus. Okay, may mucus siya. Plants. Okay. How about the epithelium? I'm asking you the type of epithelium. Uh, uh, type of epithelium. Is that um, pseudostratified, Doc? Ano nga klase ang pseudostratified? Dabo ba yan? Uh, pseudo stratified columnar. Okay, very good. This is a pseudo stratified columnar. Stratified columnar. Okay, klaro ang basement membrane pseudo stratified kasi nagibaba ang layers. Then the shapes are columnar. Okay, next, Miss Kuritana. Yes, doc. Miss Kuritana. Yes, po doc. Hello. We cannot hear you. 
Hello, Doc. Please. Okay. Classify the gland present based on the number. Glands present. Um, based on the... Classify the gland present based on the number. Um, um, is it multicellular? Multicellular dog. Multi ba? Oh, okay. It's so, uni unicellular. Wala ka mag iba. Isa lang naman siya. O isang gland lang naman. Ah, okay. Isa. okay. Isa. isa. Baka sinabi mo multicellular kasi marami sila dito. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pero ang ibig sabihin niyan is the press. Kung itataho ba natin ito na Adila o sa Manlahiya. No? Ah, okay. So, this is a unicellular gland or a goblet cell. Ah, oh, okay. Thank you, Doc. Okay, so we are done with this one. Let's go to the surface modification. Okay? So as I have said, they can be classified based sa location. Okay? It can be in the apical, lateral, or the basal. Pag apical, we have the microvilli, cilia, and the flagella. For the lateral, we have the sunula occludens and adherence the desmosomes, and the gap junctions. And in the basal surface, we have the basal lamina or the basement membrane and the hemidesmosomes. Okay. So let's go first with the apical surface modification. The first apical surface modification is called a microvilli. So microvilli are plasma membrane evaginations of the apical portions or the apical surface. The main function is to increase the surface area of absorption. So these are made up of actin microfilament. So part sila ng plasma membrane no, na nag invaginate doon. Okay? So these are example of your microvilli seen in the um, electron microscope. So this is a diagrammatic picture. So showing you a microvilli. So part siya ng cell. Parang extension lang. So microscopic picture. These are your microvilli. Okay? In the apical portion. Okay? So the microvilli has different names. Pero microvilli pa rin yan in general. If they are located in the intestines, they are called striated border. Okay? But if the microvilli is located in the kidney, they are called brush border. Okay? But if they are located in the epididymis and the ductus deferens, they are called stereocilia. Okay? All of this, they are still called microvilli. Okay? Example. No? So in the intestine, you can see this one. So you can see here mga parang mga pike. No? So these are your striated border or your microvilli. Microvilli. Okay? In the kidney, they're called brush border. No? But still, they are microvilli. Okay? Apex man ito, di ba? Apex, lumen. So in the, you can see the modifications here. These are your microvilli or your brush border. Okay? In the epididymis, no, we have what we call stereocilia. Okay, stereocilia. Apical portion, lumen, basal portion. So apical modification, we have stereocilia here. Okay. Stereocilia are the only microvilli that are long as cilia. Okay. Compared to cilia, they are non-motile. So they are seen in the ductus epididymis the ductus deferens, and they help for the sperm to move, okay? And found also in the hair cells of your inner ear, okay? Then another surface modification, apical, is the cilia, okay? Cilia are the plasma membrane and the cytoplasmic projections. So they're also known as kinocilia. Kino kasi kinetics, no gumagalaw. So my motility. Ang cilia, motile compared to your cilia, uh, stereocilia. Okay. But the motility here is that they are synchronous. 
No? So they are if, if God, they are going to the left, they all will be going to the left. Going to the right, going to the right. Okay? And they are made up of microtubules. Okay. So this is the cilia and this is a microvilli to differentiate. Okay? So the cilia part may part siya ng cytoplasm as well as plasma membrane. Ito dito lang. Pero mas mahaba ang cilia. Okay. Motility. Saan ang motile? Cilia. Okay. Cilia doc. Then they are also longer compared to your microvilli. And they are thicker. No? Mas makapal sila compared sa microvilli mo. Okay. And they are made up of microtubule. Okay. Compared to your microvilli. Okay. So these are your cilia. Cilia located in the respiratory epithelium. Okay, so this is a pseudostratified columnar epithelium with cilia. Okay, so that's why ang tawag na natin sa epithelium na ito ay pseudostratified columnar epithelium with cilia. Okay? Another one, pseudostratified columnar epithelium with cilia. Another apical uh, surface modifications are your flagella. Your flagella, they have the same microstructure as cilia, but they occur singly. They're longer in length versus the cilia, and mas mabilis sila, the motility of spermatozoa. So mabilis ang flagella gumalaw compared sa mga cilia. Okay? So we are done with the apical surface modifications. Let's go to the lateral specializations or modifications okay the lateral modifications are seen only in electron microscopy take note ha? mahirap makita except for the desmosomes no ang desmosomes medyo makikita natin under ordinary microscope but the rest puro yan electron microscope okay so these are your lateral modifications okay we have tight junction adherence junction desmosome gap junction and hemidesmosome okay so the uh, first one is the tight junction your tight junction is also known as the zunula occludens so it serves to fuse two plasma membrane and acts as a seal. So this seals the neighboring cells. Lateral man, no? So that is tight junction. It's sealed siya. Or zunula occludens. Okay. Second is the zunula adherence or the adherence junction. This is also known as the belt desmosome or the band desmosome. Okay. And the joints act in bundles between two cells. And they're seen in the heart muscle, the layers of the covering body organs, and in the digestive tract. And they are very rich in adherin. Okay? Then the desmosomes. The desmosomes joins intermediate filaments between the cells. So when you say desmos, it is bond. It, it means bond. No? We have... Uh, Ang tawag niyan? Mighty band. No? Mighty band. Pandikit. Okay? So this is also known as macula adherence or the spot desmosome. So they are seen in the skin, lining of the internal body cavity surfaces. So they disappear when the cells are transformed. Okay? So as I have said kanina, desmosome is the only thing that we can see under ordinary microscope. Just like ito ang mga desmosome. Okay? This is one cell another cell. So, ang parang nag-join sa kanila ay mga desmosome sa skin. So, this is also known as the intercellular bridges. Intercellular bridges. Kasi parang nag-bridge sila from one cell to another. So, if you look at this under electron microscope, these are your desmosomes. Okay? Your, so, your number one Number two and number three are called junctional complexes. Okay? Number one, 
Number two and number three are called the junctional complexes. Then next are your gap junction. So gap junctions allows direct communication between cells. So open and close. So they close membranes two to three nanometer apart. And they're also known as the nexus or the communicating junction. So they are made up of conic scenes. Okay. And the last part of the lateral modifications are your hemidesmosomes. Your hemidesmosomes anchors the cell. That if, this, if this is your cell, it anchors to the basement membrane. If this is your basement membrane. Sila yung nagdidikit no? to the basement membrane. Okay? Then how about basal specializations? We have only two basal specializations. We have the hemidesmosomes, as I have mentioned a while ago, and the basal lamina. Uh, the hemidesmosomes can be uh, basal, and it can be a lateral as well as the basal uh, modification. Okay? Basal lamina, I already discussed from the very beginning that we have the lamina rara, lamina interna, and as well as uh, the electron microscopic findings that I mentioned from the start of this lecture. Okay. So this is your hemidesmosomes. So siya ang nagkakabit ng cell na yan to the basal lamina. Okay. So last part. So we are done with the uh, uh, surface epithelium. We are done with the glandular epithelium. Let's go to the last part. We have the special epithelium. So under special, we have the myo epithelium, neuro epithelium, and the seminiferous epithelium or the germinal. This is called the germinal epithelium. Okay. Myo epithelium, syempre myo, no? So there are four contraction branch epithelial cells, and they are seen between the glandular epithelial cells and basement membrane. So the purpose is to help the gland, no? Pag may contraction, ilalabas yung secretion. So that's the purpose of your myoepithelium. So they contain actin filaments. They facilitate glandular secretion. So they are seen in the sweat glands, salivary, lacrimal, and mammary tissues. Okay? So, this is uh, from the breast, no? So this is the duct, duct of the breast. Okay, so you can see here, we have the myoepithelial cells. So they are called the myoepithelium. So they help this gland na mag-contract para mailabas yung milk, which is secretions of your breast, okay? Another type of special epithelium is the neuroepithelium. So this is seen in the taste buds, okay? So, so a special type of epithelium, okay? So you will go into details when you go to the digestive system, uh, when we study the tongue or the, the, the different parts of the tongue, histologic components of the tongue. So from this, I just want to show that there's a special type of epithelium in the tongue, which is called a neuroepithelium. So it helps to... to to different shape, no? The different taste, no? Kung sweet ba yan. It also uh, helps to interpret the brain kung anong type of taste yan. Okay? So, nawawala ito. Nasisira ito during COVID, no? If you have a COVID-positive patient, nasisira siya. Kaya walang taste, walang, uh, nawawala ang sense of taste ng mga COVID patients. Okay? Another type of, of uh, special epithelium, neuroepithelium, are the layers of your retina. Okay? So as you can see, ang daming layers ng retina. But we will not go to this in detail because this will be studied under special senses. I just want to emphasize that this is, or to show you that this is an example of uh, neuroepithelium. No? This is a lining epithelium of our retina. Okay, so another type of special epithelium are your germinal epithelium. Okay, so as you can see, hindi mo siya maklasify kung squamous, hindi mo siya maklasify kung columnar, hindi siya maklasify kung cuboidal kasi special type of epithelium. 
the germinal epithelium, which are seen in your seminiferous tubules. These blue, small blue cells are the, the, the immature spermatocytes. No? So later on, if they are in the basal portion, they are the most immature. So the, the nearer to the lumen, sila na yung magiging mature spermatocyte. Okay? So this is a special type of epithelium in the seminiferous tubules and called germinal epithelium. Again, no need for you to know the details because once we go to the male reproductive system, it will be again um, be a lecture for you in details. But in this part of the lecture, I just want to, to show you that this is one example of a special type of epithelium, which is a germinal epithelium. Okay? So I think I'm done with my lecture. Any questions? So let us summarize first, okay? So of course the definition of epithelium, you have to define what's an epithelium, the functions of your epithelium, how to classify the epithelium, meaning the surface, the glandular, and the special type of epithelium. For the surface, we have simple, stratified, then it depends upon the shape of the cell, and if there's a presence or absence of modifications, okay? Your modifications are also known as specializations. So they can be in the apical surface, they can be in the basal surface, or they can be in the lateral surface. For the glandular, there are uh, many ways of classifying the glands. So based on the number of cells, the pattern of your duct system, the pattern of your secretory portion, the presence of a uh, number of glands, as well as the type of secretions and the manner of secretion. And the last part of epithelium is the neuroepithelium. And the, type, the subtypes are the myoepithelium, the neuroepithelium, and the germinal epithelium. So I'm done with my lecture. So any question? Excuse me po, Doc. Yes. Question po. Um, how often do you see cilia sa pseudostratified epithelium? They are always present there. Okay. Uh -oh. Especially in the uh, respiratory passages. No? Especially in the respiratory passages. So they are...